So in our third increment for Wonky Kong, I want to add in the ability to have the game detect when my monkey catches the bananas, right? So in the first increment, we moved the monkey. In the second increment, we moved the bananas. Now in the third increment, we want to detect interaction between those. And here's where we have a design decision we have to worry about. We have to start to think about who should be looking for the collision or the, the overlap between these two objects. And there are a couple of possibilities. We could have the monkey looking to see whether it's touching the bananas. We could have the bananas looking to see whether it's touching the monkey. And in theory, it might be possible even to have the stage ask whether the monkeys and the bananas happen to be touching each other, although that's the hardest of the three. Normally, what, when we're looking for interaction between uh, two objects, what we're going to use is a sensing block that, again, you may have noticed uh, during uh, the, the, the opening tasks for this module. But let's look at these sensing blocks now that we haven't really looked at much. Uh, above the ask that we looked at in module three, there's some basic sensing that says, am I touching something? Am I touching a color? Are colors touching each other. And so there's different ways that we can do this. Normally, when, when I make games, I actually have one sprite look to see if it's touching another sprite. That's the easiest to do, given the, uh, the sensing operations that we have. And normally, we only want one of those sprites worrying about looking to see whether it's detecting the other sprite. I'll talk later in this module about the challenges with that and why there's a, there's a, it's bad to have two things both looking for a collision with the other thing. So for now, let's just think of, well, which does it make more sense? Should the monkey look to see if it's catching the bananas or the bananas see if it's touching the monkey? And, and the answer that you want to ask is, well, who's going to most change when that happens? Right? Who's going to react? Well, in this particular case, when the, when the monkey catches the bananas, I'm going to want the bananas to jump to the top and start falling again. Right? You're going to get a point, maybe, for catching the bananas. And then the bananas jump to the top and keep going. The monkey's just always staying here at the bottom. So it makes the most sense to me to have the banana look to see if it's touching the monkey. And so let's do that. Let's drag out the touching block. And you'll notice that when I click on the drop down of the touching block, I'll always see mouse pointer and edge. Those are always in every touching block. And then below this line is everything that's a, a sprite in the game, which at this point is only the monkey. You, you can't find out if it's touching yourself. So I want to know, is the banana, right? I mean, the banana sprite, is the banana touching the monkey? Right? And what do I want to do if the banana is touching the monkey? Well, a couple of things. One, I'll want to get a point. Right? So let's look at how we do that. I haven't added an, an idea of a score yet. What is a score? Well, score is data. It's variables that we're going to be keeping track of. So let's do this. Let's create a variable called score. As soon as you introduce variables, one of the things you want to think about is, is then how are we going to use that? Right? Well, I actually want this to show up on the board. And if I'm touching the monkey, I want to, do I want to set the score? Set the score would say, take whatever the score happens to be and just throw that away and, and put a new value in. We could say, set the score to 1. But the problem with that then is that every time I catch the, the monkey catches the bananas, or in reality, every time the banana is touching the monkey, then we're going to just set the score to 1. That's not what I want. I want to do change the score. I want to take whatever the score happens to be, and I want to increase it by one point. Right? So if we're touching the monkey, then change the score by one. And the question is, well, where does this go? Well, I could go something like here. I could say every time that the banana moves, I want the banana to drop, change by one, see if it's touching the monkey, and then if it is, change the score by one. And let me even just show you what that looks like, right? So let me come over here. I'm going to catch the bananas, and boom! You see that, first of all, the bananas keep dropping, and my score just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, because look at what I told the, com the computer to do. Change this at y by one, have the banana drop. If you're touching the monkey, add a point, and then, well, come back around again and drop again. 
it's, that's not quite what I want. I need to add another thing here. I need to sort of reset the monkey if I do this. And so if I wanted to do this, I would need to, in essence, repeat this block right here. I would need to send the monkey to the top of, or the bananas, excuse me, to the top of the screen. So I'm going to do duplicate. Notice, unfortunately, it duplicates everything from the block I want all the way to the bottom. So I have to throw this all away. This is the only block I wanted. I could do this. Right? Let me make it smaller so we can see it a little better. It says, forever, change y by negative 1. If you're touching the monkey, then change the score by 1 and jump back up to the top again. All right, that seems to make some sense. Let's see how that works then. So, bananas are falling. I can catch the banana. I get a point and it jumps. And I come back over. And I get a point and it jumps. Now you may notice this is, I am adding a point, right? Right now it's 45. Fun little monkey. And now it goes to 46. But, but the problem is, how did I get 46 points? Well, right now when I press the green flag, the game should restart. Right? One of the things that should have happened is that when this game runs, when I say places everybody, the score variable had to reset to zero. The question is who should be responsible for that? Uh, we could easily put it here with bananas. Bananas are worrying about score, so we could do it there. I tend to, and this is the computer scientist in me, I tend to like to make that part of the stage manager's job. Just like I like to put the sound effects with the stage manager, I like to put data initialization with the stage. When the green flag is pressed, set the score to zero. Right, so now the score went to zero, and now the monkey can move. I can catch the bananas, get, get one point, get two points, and off we go. We've got the very beginnings of my program. That's a good, successful third increment. We've now got it set so that we're catching the bananas. Well, what we want to look now in the next increment is, well, what happens when I completely miss the bananas and they hit the ground? That makes a nice separate increment because we already have it working so that I can catch the banana. So let's make that next separate increment now.